going to try to record evening prayer again with my phone because I didn't learn my lesson. So um, what I wanted to do tonight was uh, Ash Wednesday evening prayer. And um, I don't think I've ever done this before because um, I'm usually... I'm usually in church, actually, for Ash Wednesday, but I think I was last year. I'm pretty sure we had an Ash Wednesday service. I don't think the lockdown started until March. I know we missed Easter, but um, I don't usually do Ash Wednesday evening prayer, so that'll be the first time for this. I think, pretty sure I've done a video before where I've used the penitential rite, um, but I don't think that I've done an Ash Wednesday evening prayer. So this will be a little different for me. I'm not even sure exactly how to start it. Uh, usually when I do evening prayer I've gotten quite accustomed to uh, using the service of light from the BAS. I'm not really even sure how I used to start the evening prayer from the BCP. I think I just started by uh, reading or chanting the psalm without an uh, invitatory uh, of any kind or anything like that, which seems odd now. Um, but because I can't start, I guess, with the service of light, because it's not appropriate to do so during a penitential uh, office, I'll have to try to freestyle, make it up as I go along. Because as I've mentioned before, I'm not an expert at this, and I am not um, somebody who's received any kind of official training or formal training of any kind. So uh, I'm just using the prayer books at home on my own. And so I encourage you to try to do the same if you're interested in uh, cultivating a, uh, a prayer life at home that includes the, the prayer books and the office. So anyway, I'm going to get started. So. I usually light a candle, I'll do that now and then I will begin. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my trouble. Incline your ear to me. When I call, make haste to answer me. For my days drift away like smoke, and my bones are hot as burning coal. My heart is smitten like grass and withered, so that I forget to eat my bread. Because of the voice of my groaning, I am but skin and bones. I have become like a vulture in the wilderness, like an owl among the I lie awake and groan. I am like a sparrow lonely on a housetop. My enemies revile me all day long, and those who scoff at me have taken an oath against me. For I have eaten ashes for bread, and mingled my drink with weeping. 
because of your indignation and wrath. You have lifted me up and thrown me away. My days pass away like a shadow, and I wither like the grass. But you, O Lord, endure forever. and have compassion on Zion for it is time to have mercy upon her indeed the appointed time has come for your servants love her very rubble and are moved to pity even for her dust the nations shall fear your name the kings of the earth your glory for the Lord will build up Zion and his glory will appear he will look with favor on the prayer of the homeless he will not despise their plea let this be written for a future generation, so that a people yet unborn may praise the Lord. For the Lord looked down from his holy place on high, from the heavens he beheld the earth, that he might hear the groan of the captive, set free those condemned to die, that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord, and his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples are gathered together, and the kingdoms also to serve the Lord. He has brought down my strength before my time. He has shortened the number of my days. And I said, O oh my God, do not take me away in the midst of my days. Your years endure throughout all generations. In the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you will endure. They all shall wear out like a garment. As clothing you will change them, and then shall all be changed. But you are always the same, and your years will never end. The children of your servant shall continue, and their offspring shall stand fast in your sight. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord says, Shout as loud as you can. Tell my people Israel about their sins. They worship me every day, claiming that they are eager to know my ways and obey my laws. They say they want me to give them just laws and that they take pleasure in worshiping me. The people ask, why should we fast if the Lord never notices? 
Why should we go without food if he pays no attention? The Lord says to them, The truth is that at the same time as you fast, you pursue your own interests and oppress your workers. Your fasting makes you violent and you quarrel and fight. Do you think this kind of fasting will make me listen to your prayers? When you fast, you make yourself suffer. You bow your heads low like a blade of grass and spread out sackcloth and ashes to lie on. Is that what you call fasting? Do you think I will be pleased with that? The kind of fasting I want is this. Remove the chains of oppression and the yoke of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Share your food with the hungry and open your homes to the homeless poor. Give clothes to those who have nothing to wear and do not refuse to help your own relatives. Then my favor will shine on you like the morning sun and your wounds will be quickly healed. I will always be with you to save you. My presence will protect you on every side. When you pray, I will answer you. When you call to me, I will respond. If you put an end to oppression, to every gesture of contempt, and to every evil word, if you give food to the hungry and satisfy those who are in need, then the darkness around you will turn to the brightness of noon. And I will always guide you and satisfy you with good things. I will keep you strong and well. You will be like a garden that has plenty of water, like a spring of water that never runs dry. Your people will rebuild what has long been in ruins, building again on the old foundations. You will be known as the people who rebuilt the walls, who restored the ruined houses. The Lord says, if you treat the Sabbath as sacred and do not pursue your own interests on that day, if you value my holy day and honor it by not traveling, working, or talking idly on that day, then you will find the joy that comes from serving me. I will make you honored all over the world, and you will enjoy the land I gave to your ancestor Jacob. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Hebrews. My fellow believers, be careful that no one among you has a heart so evil and unbelieving that he will turn away from the living God. Instead, in order that none of you be deceived by sin and become stubborn, you must help one another every day. As long as the word today in the scriptures in the scripture applies to us. For we are all partners with Christ if we hold firmly to the end the confidence we had at the beginning. This is what the scripture says. If you hear God's voice today, do not be stubborn as your ancestors were when they rebelled against God. Who were the people who heard God's voice and rebelled against him? All those who were led out of Egypt by Moses. With whom was God angry for 40 years? with the people who sinned, who fell down dead in the desert. When God made his solemn promise, they will never enter the land where I would have given them rest. Of whom was he speaking? Of those who rebelled. We see then that they were not able to enter the land because they did not believe. Now God has offered us the promise that we may receive the rest he spoke about. Let us take care then that none of you will be found to have failed to receive that promised rest. For we have heard the good news just as they did. They heard the message, but it did not, but it did them no good, because when they heard it, they did not accept it with faith. We who believe then do receive that rest which God promised. It is just as he said, I was angry and made a solemn promise. They will never enter the land where I would have given them rest. 
He said this, even though his work had been finished from the time he created the world. For somewhere in the scriptures, this is said about the seventh day. God rested on the seventh day from all his work. This same matter is spoken of again. They will never enter that land where I would have given them rest. Those who first heard the good news did not receive that rest because they did not believe. They are then others, there are then others who are allowed to receive it. This is shown by the fact that God sets another day, which is called today. Many years later, he spoke of it through David in the scripture already quoted. If you hear God's voice today, do not be stubborn. If Joshua had given the people the rest that God had promised, God would not have spoken later about another day. As it is, however, there still remains for God's people a rest like God's resting on the seventh day. For whoever receives that rest which God promised will rest from his own work, just as God rested from his. Let us then do our best to receive that rest, so that no one of us will fail as they did because of their lack of faith. The word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts away, it cuts all the way through to where soul and spirit meet, to where joints and marrow come together. It judges the desires and thoughts of a man's heart. There is nothing that can be hidden from God. Everything in all creation is exposed and lies open before his eyes. And it is to him that we must all give an account of ourselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath helped in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham, and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. 
For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful Spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite, oh, contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Be favorable and gracious to Zion, and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the appointed sacrifices, with burnt offerings and oblations. And shall I offer young bullocks upon your altar? Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In Jesus' name, amen. O Lord, save thy servants that put our trust in thee. Send unto them help from above, and evermore mightily defend them. Help us, O God, our Savior, and for the glory of thy name deliver us. Be merciful unto us sinners for thy name's sake. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, we beseech thee, mercifully hear our prayers, and spare all those who confess their sins unto thee, that they, whose consciences by sin are accused, by thy merciful pardon may be absolved. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O most mighty God and merciful Father, who hast compassion upon all, and hatest nothing that thou hast made, who wouldst not the death of a sinner, but that he should turn, but that he should rather turn from his sin and be saved, mercifully forgive our trespasses, receive and comfort us, who are grieved and wearied with the burden of our sins. Thy property is always to have mercy, 
to thee only it appertaineth to forgive sins. Spare, O Lord, spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed. Enter not into judgment with thy servants, who truly repent us of our faults, but so make haste to help us in this world, that we may ever live with thee in the world to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Turn thou us, O good Lord, and so shall we be turned. Be favorable, O Lord, be favorable to thy people, who turn to thee in weeping, fasting, and praying. For thou art a merciful God, full of compassion, long-suffering, and of great pity. Thou sparest when we deserve punishment, and in thy wrath thinkest upon mercy. Spare thy people, good Lord, spare them, and let not thine heritage be brought to confusion. Hear us, O Lord, for thy mercy is great, and according to the multitude of thy mercies look upon us. Through the merits and meditation of thy blessed Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus saw the crowds and went up a hill, where he sat down. His disciples gathered round him, and he began to teach them. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn. God will comfort them. Happy are those who are humble. They will receive what God has promised. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. God will satisfy them fully. Happy are those who are merciful to others. God will be merciful to them. Happy are the pure in heart. They will see God. Happy are those who work for peace. God will call them his children. Happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are you when people insult you and persecute you and tell all kinds of evil lies against you because you are my followers. Be happy and glad, for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. This is how the prophets who lived before you were persecuted. You are like salt for all mankind, but if salt loses its saltiness, there is no way to make it salty again. It has become worthless, so it is thrown out and people trample on it. You are like a light for the whole world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a bowl. Instead, he puts it on the lampstand, where it gives light for everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine before people, so that they will see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to do away with the law of Moses and the teachings of the prophets. I have not come to do away with them, but to make their teachings come true. Remember that as long as heaven and earth last, not the least point nor the smallest detail of the law will be done away with, not until the end of all things. So then, whoever disobeys even the least important of the commandments and teaches others to do the same will be least in the kingdom of heaven. On the other hand, whoever obeys the law and teaches others to do the same will be great in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you then that you will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven only if you are more faithful than the teachers of the law and the Pharisees in doing what God requires. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, for thy tender mercy's sake, lay not our sins to our charge, but forgive that is past, and give us grace to amend our sinful lives, and to decline from sin, and incline to virtue, that we may walk with a perfect heart before thee now and evermore. Remember, O man, that dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. And let our prayer come unto thee. Almighty and everlasting God, who forgave us the people of Nineveh when they repented in sackcloth and ashes, 
mercifully grant that we, truly repenting of our sins, may obtain of thee perfect pardon and release. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, our Father, who makest thy Son to rise upon the evil and upon the good, and send us rain upon the just and upon the un unjust, help us to love our enemies and to forgive those who trespass against us, that we may receive of thee the forgiveness of our sins and be made thy children in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of thy name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O King, all glorious amid thy saintly company, who ever shalt be praised, thou, O Lord, art in the midst of us, and we are called by thy holy name. Leave us not, O our God, but grant us that with a pure conscience we may duly keep the Paschal Feast, and at the day of judgment be placed in the number of thy saints and chosen ones, King most blessed. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace, both now and evermore. Amen. That was truly awful. I really butchered the 51st Psalm uh, quite badly, in my opinion. And I also skipped a line in one of the last prayers. Um, so uh, maybe not my best effort. It's funny because uh, in the monastic traditions, um, I guess uh, originally great care was taken by the monks to to get their offices perfect, and not that they shouldn't have, but they were actually quite uh, hard on themselves when they messed up. And I think that, at least in my opinion, one of the things that's changed for the better is the idea that when you mess up, you uh, don't focus on it. Um, kind of like when you fall off your horse, you get back on the horse. Uh, do your best and, and try to do it right. And then when you mess it up, like I did several times tonight, um, just uh, keep going, keep trying, keep doing it. You'll get better at it and um, try not to get too uh, focused on the negative, focus on the positive. And uh, what was it, uh, Brother Bede in, uh, at Holy Cross? Uh, monastery in New York had uh, written in one of his blogs in one of the priors blogs he'd written about uh, he was talking specifically about meditation but it applies to prayer too to um, not beat yourself up when you uh, when your mind drifts or in this case when you make a mistake in your office um, and uh, not be overly harsh on yourself basically um, Try to bring yourself back in the case of meditation and in the case of office, I guess. Um, just try to uh, keep at it, keep going, and not get distracted by the mistakes that you make. Focus on what you're doing. But anyway, um, that's Ash Wednesday for 2021. The evening prayer for Ash Wednesday, seeing as how there isn't a church service at my parish. And uh, hopefully this video is helpful to you in some way and encourages you to, to do the office on your own at home. Good night.